uh, a lifetime experience uh, and a life-changing experience. Uh, this was all started off when I was a little boy. Uh, my mother had rubella and I therefore had defects with my hearing and my heart. And uh, when I was young, obviously, I had a lot to do with doctors. I had open heart surgery when I was 11 and that really convinced me that I had something to give back to society, uh, sort of like a payback, if you like. And that's really been a, a strong driver throughout my career. It also uh, was useful in, in helping me in uh, uh, maybe satisfying my other goals. Uh, I think to have a passion about something, you've got to be passionate about yourself and you've got to be passionate about others. Uh, clearly, I had a, a passion about what I wanted to do about myself and uh, that helped to drive me and a passion to help others. It does seem a little bit corny. A lot of people use it in interviews to get into medicine, but it is, I think, an important driver that you do want to help others and improve uh, their health. And uh, those were strong drivers to help me uh, get into medicine, get through the course. And uh, I think I made the right decision. I think uh, passion for self is, uh, it's a little bit uh, maybe self-centered to talk about one's ego, but uh, ego is a very strong force. And I, I think getting reinforcement from your patients that you've helped uh, is very strong in, in making you more passionate. Uh, and people complimenting on you on a good job you're doing. But the other part of that I think is being a role model and a, a, a member of a team and also with things like uh, succession planning. So you're always looking to the next generation of doctors and surgeons who you can influence. Uh, that's why I'm very much involved with education and training because I see it's very important to uh, train the next generation to be as good as we are. And my goal is to make them better than I am. And uh, so, uh, and, and to see these young people be successful, uh, that that's, that's also helps, helps one e ego in, in a sense. Uh, what uh, complements ego to some extent is my principle, which I call the HIS principle, which is humility, insight, and the ability to communicate. I think as well as having an ego at one end of the spectrum, you also have to have enough humility to realise that you can mis make mistakes and that other people may be better than you. Have enough insight to realise when it's maybe time to retire. And you have, have the, the communication skills to be able to uh, convey these thoughts to others, but just generally communicate well. And uh, I, I think those two need to be in balance, a balance between your ego at one end and your ability to be humble and have insight at the other. I'm a full-time SAR specialist in a public hospital in Melbourne, which is unusual in Melbourne. It's a bit more common in Sydney and, and Queensland. Uh, so I've taken on uh, the challenge, if you like, of being a leader in that system. And I, I think uh, clinicians showing leadership, that is people at the coalface are actually doing the work, uh, are much more effective than medical administrators sitting behind a desk. But it's very important that we work closely with them. And when a surgeon in my unit says, oh, the bloody administrators are making a mess of this, I say, that's me. Uh, if you've got a problem, talk to me about it. Uh, and uh, they often say, oh, Bruce, how can you be both a leader, administrator and, and a surgeon? And I said, well, it's very important that I take that role to provide the leadership and uh, make it a little bit more, a bit more balance, if you like, in the system. I do it because I've got this passion that to, I think it has to be done and people do have to put out their hands and, and be, be accountable, take the responsibility. I often put it back to the person who's asking the question or is complaining. I say, okay, uh, let's look at some solutions. Uh, and if you empower them to be thinking about the problem rather than complaining all the time, it helps a lot.